Hey, hey, Waffle Gang, I do hope you're well. My name is Mark, and today we're checking out some more relationship stories. And if you do love a Reddit story, why not consider hitting that like, subscribe, maybe that notification bell too. And let's crack on with today's first story, which comes from Guilty Balance 556 and says, Am I the asshole for telling my mum if she wants to plan a wedding to get remarried? I, 32 female, recently started planning my wedding with my fiance, 31 female and my mum immediately jumped to help us plan. I thought at first it'd be okay, but she would call vendors and venues she likes. We'll give them my information, so they call me about a scheduled time, and my mum swoops in to say, it'd be rude not to go since they invited you. It was obvious it was her after the third time when she wouldn't stop giggling and admitted to calling beforehand and making appointments. I wouldn't take issue with this, but my mum and I have wildly different tastes. Every time me or my fiancé tell her something like how we want to have this colour for the tablecloths or these flowers, she tells us that they look bad and will give us her own plan. She recently showed us a massive binder of different ideas she wants us to look through. It's exhausting. At every step, she will insist on looking at her ideas and when we reject them, she'll throw a fit and tell me I don't love her because I ignore all her wishes. I also want to add, I think she's had it in her head since I was a kid that she had planned my wedding. Even before I came out and dated men, she had commented on how excited she was for the wedding. And when I told her my fiancé proposed, she immediately started berating me about when we'd have the wedding so she could help us plan it. Part of it is, is when she married my dad, it was a small courthouse affair because she was pregnant with me at the time and never got a proper wedding. My dad also died 17 years ago, and she dates sporadically, but never for longer than a few months. The last time me and my fiancé went to see a venue, she tagged along and made all these comments on how gross everything was, pointing out all the tiny things wrong with it all. The person showing us was getting annoyed. My fiancé was getting annoyed, and so was I. She eventually said, if this were my wedding, I'd never even consider this dump despite it being absolutely beautiful and within the budget. I snapped and told her that if she wanted to plan a wedding so badly, she should get remarried. It was cruel, but I was so tired of her trying to have her perfect wedding through me. My fiancé thinks I'm not at fault, but the rest of my family doesn't. Am I the arsehole? Edit, adding answers to a couple of common questions. Is she paying for the wedding? No, she's not paying a penny. Why didn't you set boundaries with her? We have, she doesn't listen and will cry and guilt me and my fiancé until we go along with her or look at what she's picked out for us. I think it'd be nice, obviously not for everyone, but to have some assistance with a wedding, wedding planning, etc. But let's face it, this is not help. This is just a pain in the ass. I would find it extremely annoying if someone was arranging me to go meet vendors and and go to venues without talking to me first about the dates and times, etc., trying to force you to go and then when you're rejecting it you're getting manipulated she's throwing a fit and saying that you don't love her because you're ignoring her wishes mum that's because you're not being particularly helpful well you're not being helpful at all in this situation and i think the only way through this is a very stern conversation with her to tell her you can't be planning anything you're out just attend the wedding and enjoy yourself and in the likely event she's going to throw a fit that's up to her and then the consequences of that will be on her but Carmel Fan says, put her on a very strict info diet and set up passwords with all your vendors so that she can't call pretending to be you. Janitaz replies that saying this, give her minimal information regarding the wedding planning and definitely use passwords. If you can get any calls from vendors you did not contact personally, tell them that it was your mother who made contact, not you. And you will not commit to any meetings she has arranged. Not the arsehole. And we've seen stories similar to this in the past. And I do wonder how many of these vendors or venues get family members calling up and trying to take over weddings like this. I remember one story we covered in the past and they said to their venues, they said, only talk to me if I gave this phrase like a password over the phone. I wonder if that's a common thing. I'm not sure. But Bandicoot says not the arsehole, cut that off. Tell her she is not welcome to come to any viewings. She is allowed to send you one email per week with her suggestions, but that is it. And that if she calls and makes appointments for you, anywhere else she is no longer invited to the wedding. For the rest of the family who are taking her side, 
tell them she is being unreasonable and they are welcome to get her help planning a party of their own. Summertime fine says not the asshole, but going forward set some boundaries for your mum on what kind of help she can provide and if she oversteps again, that's when she needs to just be a guest. I had a friend get married a few years ago and her mum was like this. She ended up going with a venue that took care of everything. Ceremony, caterers, DJs, bartenders, photographer, etc. So that her mum couldn't take everything over. Assiduous Emu says, you're the asshole, but not for what you said to your mum. You're the asshole to yourself and your fiance for allowing mother to control the situation like this. And quotes, why don't you set boundaries with her? We have, she doesn't listen and will cry and guilt me, my fiance, until we go along with her or look at what she's picked out for us. And then continues, boundaries are only boundaries when there are consequences when they are broken. In your case, there are just more opportunities for your mother to show she has control over you. Time to shine the spine and stand up for yourself. If she is like this about the wedding, how do you think she's going to be when you get a house, have kids, etc.? She will demand that you allow her to be front row, front row center in your lives. And one more from Fantastic Leopard who says not the asshole. She's the one being selfish and overstepping her boundaries. You are exactly right. If she wants to plan a wedding so badly, it needs to be hers. Pulling the stunt of saying you don't love her because you don't agree with her is super manipulative. Honestly, if I was your partner, that sounds like the mother-in-law from hell. You need to set your boundaries now or soon she'll be picking the name of your kids for you. The decisions for your wedding are between you and your partner. And if your mother won't support those decisions, she shouldn't be there. It's not her wedding, so her opinion does not matter. And if she can't accept that, you need to make it very clear that you won't tolerate her disrespect and lay down a clear line she can't cross. She is being the asshole in this situation. Mothers need to start to understand their kids are their own people and treat them as such. You're obviously a grown adult, but she's acting like a manipulative teenager and she's bringing you and your partner down when this should be an exciting time. If not for your sake, for the sake of the person you love and want to start a life with. Don't let her manipulate you now. It will set a dangerous precedent, so stay strong and definitely do not apologize. And in a second, we're going to go on to that update. But I think that's a very good point. What that last comment just raised there about, you know, this is setting a dangerous precedent for the future, especially for OP's partner if boundaries are not set up now. And OP sticks to those boundaries. Because I think in the end, like we've seen in many other stories, that it's going to damage their relationship if it's allowed to continue. So then OP comes in to update the post, which says, Hello everyone, I took all of the advice to heart and me and my fiance had a sit down and looked at the comments together. And we agreed we both need to grow spines. Our wedding planner is truly a saint and had no problem setting up passwords with vendors like some people suggested. And it was a great suggestion, so thank you. We then invited my mum to dinner and told her that she has to stop trying to help us with the wedding. It started off bad as she brought her binder and had her own wedding dress in her car. Her dress is in very bad condition, would not fit either me or my fiancé and is quite frankly hideous. I would never say that to her face, though I've told her every time she asks that I want to pick out my own dress and she should keep hers for if she wants to get remarried. She assumed that we had invited her to apologize and let her plan the wedding however she wanted. How she jumped to that conclusion, I have no idea. We lied about not wanting to get her overly stressed in the hope that she'd take it better than telling her she'd been causing problems and that she hasn't been helpful. She didn't take it well and started crying and saying all she ever wanted was for me to have the perfect wedding and she'd already given up setting the perfect son-in-law and grandchildren so at the least we could let her plan the wedding. It stunned us both as she has never said a bad word about me liking women. Not when I come out, not when I got my first girlfriend, not when me and my fiance got engaged. That put me over the edge and I told her that she wasn't going to plan anything. She was a guest and nothing more and I would be cutting her speech if she was going to behave like a child. She had a full on tantrum so me and my fiance paid and left her to cry and scream in the restaurant. That was all fine and dandy until our florist called to tell us my mum had called to try and get the flower arrangements changed behind our back. I called her and she tried to lie until she realized she was backed into a corner and admitting to doing it because she knew what was best and was trying to help. Needless to say that I've now uninvited her from the wedding with the full support of my fiance and my soon to be mother-in-law and father-in-law. What the hell goes through people's heads, man? Her comments and her actions. 
you know, after everything that they went through, she still tried calling the florist behind their back, you know. When OP was talking about that mother got demoted to just a guest and she was thinking about cutting off her speech if she was going to continue to behave like a child, I thought, you got to cut off that speech anyway. My word. But now I'm going to turn this one to you guys. What would you say to OP? Let us know your thoughts down in the comments below. And let's move on to another story. And our next story comes from Commercial Present 555 who asks, am I the asshole for refusing to get rid of my pet snake even though my step siblings to be are scared of him? And it does come with an update as well. Throw away. I am 15 and I have a ball python. His name is Frederick. My grandparents got him for me a year ago and paid for everything I needed to get started. But since then I have paid for everything he needs with my own money. I'm not exaggerating when I say that I love my snake and consider him part of my family. My mum recently got engaged and my stepdad-to-be has kids. They're all nice and we normally get along very well, but we have started to have an issue. They are scared of slash just don't like Frederick. He is really nice and would never hurt anyone and even looks cute. They just don't like him since he's a snake. When they started coming over a lot, I was told to move his enclosure into my room. However, now that our parents got engaged, they're going to be moving in with us. My stepbrother is going to be sharing a room with me. He's 11. However, he doesn't want to be in the room if Frederick is in there. Our house isn't big enough for him to get his own room. His sisters are going to be sharing a room with my sisters. My parents have their own room and then we have an office. I offered to move Frederick out of my room again, but that won't work for the other kids. My mum has told me that I might just have to let go so that everyone can be happy, but I have refused. I do not, under any circumstances, want to lose him. My mum said I could get a new snake once I'm old enough to move out and it would only be a few years. Both my stepdad and my mum have offered me money and other stuff to get rid of him or that we could get a different pet, but I have refused to accept that. I don't want to sound spoiled or anything, but I want Frederick and only Frederick. I feel that if my step-siblings just gave it a chance and actually tried to get to know him even a little bit, they would be able to live with him but they just won't. They have decided to not like him and won't let me try to change their minds. I know that they will have to live with us somehow and this will have to be resolved. I asked other family and my friends and people are split. So please, am I in the wrong for refusing to budge on this? And we do have an edit and an update which we'll cover after some of the comments. And we're going to start off with Tiny Shine who says not the arsehole and quotes, my mum has told me I might just have to let go so everyone can be happy. And then goes on to say, everyone, apparently not you. You go from having your pet in a room to yourself to having to share a room and getting rid of your pet. How is that going to make you happy? Being forced to give him up will only end up making you resent the new family. It's going to be enough of an adjustment to be forced to live with four new people. And your sister is going to have two new people live in her room. Have the parents really thought about this at all? Are his kids okay with being smooshed together like this? It sounds like they need to get a different house before they get married. OP says, from what I have been able to tell, the only people who mind are me and my sister. I really only care because of the situation with Frederick and my sister cares because her room is going to have two new people. It's a tight fit. The other kids haven't complained at least, except my stepbrother because of Frederick being there. Aurora Burst says not the arsehole, I can't blame your brother for not wanting to sleep in the same room as an animal he's uncomfortable with, but you shouldn't have to get rid of Frederick. Can you keep him in the office? As an aside, your parents should move the office stuff to their room, unless they constantly work from home. It seems ridiculous to have an office when three people will be sharing a bedroom. Opie responds saying they aren't, they just use it for miscellaneous work that they have to do after they get home from their jobs. Both of those are good ideas. Cajun says, not the arsehole, boar pythons live a long time. My son got his almost 20 years ago and it still lives with us. Giving away a pet is an unreasonable request. Is there any way the snake could stay with your grandparents for a bit as a last resort? Carly Berry says, not the arsehole. I love how your mum wants to get rid of your beloved pet so everyone can be happy, except you apparently. Did you point out that you won't be happy at all if they force you to get rid of him? Could you and Frederick live with your grandparents? Also, are we allowed pet tax? I love snakes. A Gamer Wolf says, this feels more like a post for relationship advice since I can see both sides. 
From your side, Frederick is a beloved member of the family, and from your stepfamily side, Frederick is nothing more than a snake, and of course, a lot of people are afraid of snakes. But I do want to give you a warning. The closer and closer step family comes to moving in, the more likely it is that they would stop just asking and flat out just rehome Frederick when you're at school or something. I would contact your grandparents and explain to them what's going on. Tell them that you're afraid they will take Frederick away by force. While not ideal, they might be able to take Frederick's enclosure into their house so that at least he would be safe. And the more I read the comments on this and the more that Opie responded, I just kept thinking myself as the parents really thought the moving situation through with the size of the house they have, the size of the rooms. And I mean, the sister's getting two new people living with her. OP, another person who doesn't like snakes as well. It may not be the case, but it just felt like the parents went, you know, we want to move together now. Kids can deal with it. They'll be fine with it. Don't worry about that. As long as we're getting our wants and needs out of it. And just the comment that mum made that you might just have to let go so that everyone can be happy. Like everyone else said, apart from you, you're the one who's going to lose Frederick and I absolutely love that name. And it's just not on. I feel sorry for OP, I feel sorry for the sister, I feel sorry for the stepkids. It sounds like they're all just being smushed together without very much thought. I'm not sure if that's unfair to say, but it certainly feels that way to me. But then OP edited their post and says, I can't sleep, so I will talk to my parents in the morning. It's only been an hour, but you guys already have me seriously considering asking about moving in with my grandparents for the time being. Probably just until they can get a bigger house. I will also ask them about just moving into the office or keeping Frederick in there. However, since his even being in the house is an issue, this might not work. If I do move into my grandparents' house, I would rather be with him. Thanks for all the support you guys have given me. I really appreciate it. So then OP came in with a full update, which says, Hey everyone, I'm back on this account to give you guys an update. I really appreciate the support you guys gave me. I talked to my parents about options with Frederick the morning after I posted, since I posted late at night, since I couldn't sleep. In the end, after some convincing, I am now staying with my grandparents along with Frederick. My snake for those of you who didn't read the original post. My parents jumped on the idea and since I do online school and they live so close by, I was able to switch pretty quickly. As a family, we've decided this is the best for everyone. My parents agreed that the house was overcrowded and my step-siblings-to-be couldn't live with Frederick and I refused to part with him. In the end, my two stepsisters moved into the office, my parents moved that stuff into their room and I moved to my grandparents' house. Today, I came home and got more of my things and this will be our arrangement until my parents can get a new, bigger house. So in the end, Frederick is safe and everyone is happy. Everything has been going well so far, but it's only been a few days. Hopefully, everything stays good. And this ending to this, this update really gave me conflicting feelings. Like, for OP, they seem really happy that they're with Frederick and they got a good outcome for themselves. But in other ways, I'm like... What parent does that? I know they're in a bit of a odd situation with the stepkids moving in and, and things like that, which I don't agree with the way that they handled it anyway. But for OP to suggest to his mum that I want to move to the grandparents so I can stay with Frederick and mum just going, oh, yes, that's probably the best for everyone. Crack on. I honestly couldn't imagine, and I, I know it's different situations and stuff. I honestly couldn't imagine having a child and them coming up to me and say, I want to move to grandparents because of an issue that I've put on them. And then go, yeah, you know, that's probably the best for everyone. And obviously, I don't know their financial situation or anything like that. How long till they move into a bigger house? OP could be 18 by that time. I mean, it's only in three years time for him. And he'll want his own place by then. I don't know. As I said, I'm happy for OP, but sad about the situation overall. And I saw Hira asking OP a question after the update, which says, I'm happy you are happy, but I have to ask, did your mum really not put up any sort of fight to keep you at home? Any other compromise at all? Hope your sister is okay with the situation too. OP says she didn't want me to leave at first, but she didn't want to figure something else out, so I convinced her. And even if she did just throw me away, as other people have said, I don't really care. All I care about is that I'm still with Frederick. But then yes, I'm really like this reply saying, OP, I don't like snakes either. Terribly afraid of them, but this isn't a happy ending for you at all. 
You were forced out of your home for wanting to keep your pet. Your mum and stepdad created this situation by bringing four people into a maybe four bedroom house so they could play happy family. The fact that your mum is okay with this is heartbreaking. I'm happy you have your grandparents because you might need to depend on them rather than your parents in the future. And Wonderful Weird asks, are the grandparents excited to have you? Hope you respond saying, yeah, they're really awesome. Not just as in being cool, but they literally inspire awe for me. And one more question from Empress who says, how's your sister managing? You don't have to answer, but I hope she's doing okay. Hope you respond as saying, she's good. She came to visit today and says that she is much happier now that there aren't three people to her room. But now I'm going to turn this one to you guys. What do you guys make of this situation? How would you deal with it if you was OP? Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below as always. And just a huge thank you from the bottom of my heart for getting involved in today's stories, your love, support and time, not just towards me, but towards the stories, the OPs and towards each other down in the comments below always means the absolute world to me. So hopefully I will see you in the next one. Take care and much love.